In this uh, technical investigation, I'm looking at ways to model uh, chromatin or uncondensed chromosomes within the nucleus of a human cell. Uh, so you can see here on screen that I have uh, a volume filled with curves. Um, and so I've run through the process of generating here. Uh, I didn't draw this by hand uh, or model this by hand. Rather, what I was trying to do was to use a dynamic solution and what I'm doing here is um, setting up um, an object like this, which is a collision object meant to um, define the outer bounds of the nucleus. And then within that, there is a um, particle emitter, a volume emitter, and it's creating particles um, that are then moved around with a turbulence field. Now they don't uh, exit this volume because of the passive collider, the, the the polygon object here, and I've got a script attached to, or an expression attached to the particles in the per particle attribute array, um, that has each particle generate a curve as it travels along. So when the particle is born after a certain amount of time, it records its position and creates a curve and the position of the first CV in that curve. And then every so often, in this case I have it set to once every 10 frames, another CV is created, thereby extending the curve. And so it just makes a trail for where the particle has traveled. Um, I've got 23 particles being created and moved around to make the 23, half of the 46 chromosomes within the cell, 23, the two, the, the matched pairs of homologous chromosomes to make 46. Uh, except for the X and Y. Um, and so I'm making 23 at a time, and then I'll make a second 23. Now, the length of time that the particle lives will determine how long the curve is that it creates. And in this way, I'm trying to um, simulate how uh, long the actual chromosomes are. Now, they're not absolutely correct in that the actual length here does not match the length of the real chromosome. However, uh, the relative length from one chromosome to the other should be correct. So here in the outliner you can see the things that are working here, the polycube, the nucleus node to set the dynamic environment, the emitter, the volume emitter, the particle that's created, the turbulence, and then the rigid is the passive collider of the polycube. And then a whole bunch of curves have been generated from 0 to 22. So we get 23 curves there. And I've put paint effects on this so we can render them. I'm just going to delete these for now. Everything, all the curves that were created. So now if I rewind the animation and play it, you'll see particles being born, moving around, and leaving a trail of curve behind them. So you can see that one of them is highlighted. It's actually the last curve in the in the series of curves that are being created and you can see that it's following along behind the particle. So uh, you'll start to see soon that some of the shorter chromosomes uh, the particle that's generating them will die and the curve will no longer increase in length. Now one question that I have here is uh, whether the uncondensed chromosomes within the nucleus are this diffuse, whether they're this spread out. So you can see the green one that's highlighted here is, goes everywhere. Uh, there's nothing restricting its position within the nucleus. My question is whether they're actually compartmentalized at all, whether um, you know chromosome 16 just occupies one small area, or whether it is spread out like this. I haven't found a clear answer about this yet. Now you can see we're just down to three particles. Now two, and now one, and then it should finish soon, and it's done, and I can stop. I can't replay the animation right now because if I rewind, uh, these curves will disappear and new ones will be generated, so it can be done over and over again. But you can see that it creates a, a complex shape in 3D space um, that would be actually difficult to, or laborious at least, to go through and uh, model. Now in Maya, if you want to render
curve, so I'm just going to turn off my selection of uh, dynamics and polygons. So I can just select the curves here. So in Maya, if you want to render curves, you have to attach a paint, a paint effects brush to them. So I can choose something here. I'll just choose something simple like a, a glow. Oh, I lost my selection. Let me select those again. Go to paint effects, curve utilities, attach brush to curves. And then I just zoom in here and do a quick render. Now the outer stuff has been set to non-renderable. So if I do a quick render, we should just see the strokes in the render. Now uh, this can only be done with Maya software. Yep. So you can see we get a nice uh, network of fibers this way. This isn't the rendering style I'm necessarily going to go for. I just grabbed one of the paint effects brushes and applied it. Um, I'm going to probably render each of these separately or at least with a different color so I can highlight them in the animation showing picking out one chromosome among this tangle of fiber here. So the, as I said before, the question still remains whether they are actually this spread out throughout the nucleus. Now I know the nucleus will be full of, of uncondensed chromosomes at this point, but whether individual chromosomes are restricted or compartmentalized to certain areas within the nucleus. But I think that the technique will still work for that. I'll just have to set up the collision boundaries differently for each one, which will be a little more time consuming. Um, but it I think it would still work, um, and it might work even better uh, to separate them out from each other.